Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at some macros for games of chance in Roll20. These macros can emulate things like card games and slot machines, and are available as both regular macros, which do not require the API, and are also available as power cards, which do require the API. And I'll show both the API and non-API way for these macros throughout the course of this video. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Casinos and gambling halls are great locations to include in your campaign. Maybe your players are looking to gather intel on the local crime lord, or maybe they're pulling an Ocean's Eleven style heist, or maybe they just want to go and have some fun during downtime. Regardless of why they're in the casino, you want to have some games for them to play. And the good folks in the Roll20 community have got you covered. So I did not create any of the macros or power cards that we're going to look at today. Full credit for that goes to the folks on this thread. So Zakael, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, did the power cards version of the macros. And then another user named Ed S is the one who actually created the macros themselves. And Zakael went and power carded them. So full credit to both these folks and a huge thank you because these macros that they created are a lot of fun to incorporate. So let's take a look at each of Ed S's macros to start with. We'll break them down, see how they work, and then we'll switch gears and we'll look at how things work in the power cards version. So let's start out with this slots variant that Ed has right here. So what I've done is taken Ed's slots macro, I've created a new macro in my own game, and just pasted in the contents of his macro and shown it in my bar. Okay, so it's down here. I'm gonna click on slots macro and it prompts me how much do I wanna bet? I'll say five gold, we'll submit that. And then what we get is this output saying that we're gambling with five gold and it lists the payouts and what the numbers need to come up to in order to get those particular payouts. And in this example, we can see I rolled a one, a four and a six, which is not one of these patterns here, which means I didn't win anything. Okay, so let's see how this macro actually works. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna swing over my trusty notepad window here. And to start out with here, and template default, that means that we're gonna be outputting the macro in this purple box. The name is slots, and that's what gives us our title bar right here. Gambling, and then this question mark curly braces, this is prompting how much do you want to wager? And in this example, we're gonna, by default, wager five gold. We could change the default amount if you wanted to by putting in a different value here. Then we get to the payouts rolls. And so that's this. And so this is this line right here. And then we start listing out the individual rows here. So if we roll six, six, one, that's going to result in however much money we bet times two gold. So if we bet five gold, we're going to get back 10 gold on that. And then the next one is 662, and we're going to multiply that times three. And then 663, we're going to multiply by four, and, and so on and so forth. And then there are a couple of other scenarios where if we got, say, three threes, that would give us the bet times 10. If we got three fours, that would give us the bet times 12 and so on. And then finally down here, we get the actual dice that we're rolling. So we're just rolling 3d6 using inline syntax, which is the double bracket. So we're going to roll 1d6 and then we have a pipe character separating that. We're going to roll another d6 and then another pipe character and then another d6. And that's what gives us the output that you see down here with the actual results rolls. So it's a relatively straightforward macro. The thing I'm really not crazy about with it is it really puts the onus on the GM and the player to figure out did they actually win anything? Because you know there's there's not a way to do logic in a macro to to check for this, and that's not anything Ed did wrong. That's just a limitation within Roll Twenty. But if you have a pro account, then you have access to the Power Cards API, and the Power Cards API will give you a much cleaner output. So let's just take a look at that for comparisons purposes. So I'm going to highlight my character's token here, and I'm going to click the Slots Power Card macro. Again, we're going to say that we're wagering five gold. And this time around, you see, okay, Shil Raffalo, that's my character's name, tries their luck on the slot machine. They wagered five gold. They pulled the handle and stand back. And then the results are two, four, four. And because they didn't win anything, there's no prize listed. So let me roll this a couple more times real quick just to let you see what a winner would look like. Okay, so I rolled a handful more times here. You can see I got a winner down here with rolling a six, a one, and a six. That gave me a win of 10 gold. So 
let's take a look at the power card syntax for that. Again, this is available from that community post and all the power cards are up here underneath uh, Zekael's original post right here. Now the power cards API is part of the standard Roll20 script library. So if you're not familiar with how to install a script in Roll20, I'm gonna pop a card up in the top right that will show you how to do that. You just go into the library, search for power cards and add it in. Once you've got it added in, you can then copy and paste the code that Zekael has created. And that code looks like this. So this opening section here where we say power, this is telling Roll20 to use the power cards API, the double dash emote. We have the selected token name. So that means you need to have your character's token selected when you run this power card. And that's what gives this bit over here saying that Shil Refalo tries their luck on the slot machine. Then we have the name slot machine which is this bit right here we had our wager just like before you saw us bet a certain amount of gold uh, this 0d0 is a little bit of a workaround what this means is we're just going to take the flat value that was typed into the box and we're going to use that for math purposes and that's just kind of a workaround that power cards needs in order to take an input of a number and use that in math uh, then right here we have the little emote talking about that we're pulling the handle and standing back as the reels tick by. And then we have our result. And this is going to look similar to what we had in our other macro. We're rolling D6s. But there is one minor typo here. Uh, they actually have a couple of D8s in this. And unless you're really looking to stack the machine against the players you want to change this to d6 from d8 uh, because then otherwise you're rolling d8s and that's even higher odds that your players are going to lose so it just depends on how crooked you want your gambling hall to be i guess so we're going to have them roll three d6s and then what you've got here are a list of the different options so if the rolls come up as six six and one then we display ding, 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 you win the amount you wagered time two. And then here, if it's six, one, and six, very similar to what we saw before, we're just going to run down the list here and put in the appropriate payout. And depending on what numbers came up, the player wins a certain amount of money, anywhere from double their initial wager to 36 times their initial wager. And I like the power cards implementation of this better just because the output is cleaner. It's very easy to know if you won. And if you lost, you don't get anything. If you won, you're told how much gold you won. So the next macro that Ed has for us is the Zowie slot variant. So I've already copied and put that into my game here. And let's go ahead, let's roll that. That's the Zowie slot machine right here. Again, we're gonna bet five gold. And this is gonna look very similar to the original slot machine. It's just there are more ways to win. You can see we have 777 and 888. So we're actually going up to eights instead of just up to sixes. So if I swing over the code for this, you're gonna look and see that it's it's almost identical to the original slot machine macro. Again, we're using the default template, which is the purple box. We have the name of Zowie slots, which is right here. We're going to display the amount that the player wagered, and then we list all the possible payouts. The difference here is we're rolling a D8 this time. So it's harder to win, but the payouts are also potentially bigger because you've got multiplying times 100 for your giant jackpot here. So you wager five gold, it's theoretically possible that you could win 500 gold as a result of that. Now, Zakael has a power card for that as well, which I've also already brought into my game. Let's just see what that looks like. We'll go ahead, we'll run the Zowie power card. Again, we'll wager five. And this time around, you see the output looks identical. It's just now we're rolling D8s. So you remember earlier I said that there was a little bit of a typo in the original slot machine. I think it's just because it was a copy paste error. So if we look at the code for this power card, so we start out with power, saying again, power cards, the emote with the selected token name. So again, you need to make sure you have your token selected when you run this power card. 
it's the Zowie slot machine. And then now we are rolling the D8s. So I think that maybe in the other slot machine macro is just a copy paste error that was there. But again, make sure you do change it in the original slot machine. And then here it's very much the same logic as what we saw earlier. So if the player rolls a six, a six and a one, then they double their money. If they roll an eight, an eight, and an eight, then they take their initial wager and multiply it by 100. So again, very similar to what we saw earlier. It's just we're using a bigger die roll with potentially a bigger payout. Now, the next game that Ed has for us is called In Between. And again, I've already copied that into my game. So I'm going to run the In Between macro here. I'm going to bet 10 gold. And the output here is it shows you the rolls of three dice. And the idea is that the center die needs to be a number in between the two dice on the outside. So in order to win with rolling a 15 on one end and a 20 on the other, I would need to roll a 16, a 17, an 18, or a 19 in order to win. And my payout for that would have been 25 gold had I won. And then the rules are also listed here saying the center die must be between the other two, that a tie would be a loss. So if I had rolled a 15, and a 15, then that would be a loss. And then if the outside dice match, that's an automatic loss. The challenge again here is there's no way to know whether or not you won automatically. You need to check, okay, is that in the middle? No, okay, you didn't win. But let's take a look at the code for that. Again, we're starting out with the default macro template, which is gonna give us that purple box. The name for this is in between, which is what you see here in the title bar. We're betting a 10 gold by default. And then our results are this inline roll with this CS greater than 21 CF greater than one. But what is that all about? Well, if you notice over here in the right, we see that the boxes are color coded. So the two boxes on the outside are highlighted in red, whereas the box in the center is highlighted in blue. And so the CS greater than 21, what that's saying is we get a critical success for this on a value greater than 21, which is impossible on a D20, but it's a critical failure on something greater than a one. And so what we get here is a box in red for our outside die. And then on the inside, the critical success is anything greater than a one and a critical failure is anything greater than a one. And that combination, <laughs> strange as it seems, is what gives us the blue box. So that is just a being done to color code the output to make it a little easier for you to read to say, okay, I need the blue number to be in between the two red numbers. And then we have our payout, which is basically 2.5, the amount that we initially wager, and then the text of our rules. So very simple macro in terms of what's happening here. So Zakael chose to implement this a little bit differently. He has the player rolling a certain amount of D6, then the house rolls that same amount of D6, and whoever has the higher total wins. So let's see how that one looks. So we're just gonna come back in here. We're gonna run the power card. How many dice do you wanna roll? We're gonna say we wanna roll four D6. We'll submit that. How much are we wagering? Five gold. And we see here, okay, we wagered five gold and I rolled a 20 and the house rolled a 21. And so uh, I lose, better luck next time. The code for that looks like this, where we see again, power, we have an emote, the selected token tries their luck at the in-between table. I would actually change this to be the high-low table because it's a different game. It's not really in-between anymore. And then We've got our roll. We're saying how many dice do you want to roll? One, two, or three. And then we have this right sub. So the payout is going to be the number of dice that you rolled plus one. So if you rolled 4d6, it's going to be five times your wager. So if you rolled four dice, we would say how many dice? Four plus one, five times your wager. That's going to be 25 gold. We got the rules, highest total wins, ties lose. This is our bet. How much are we wagering? We roll. And then if the first roll, the player's roll, is greater than the house roll, then we win, and we do out the math. 
if the roles are equal or if the house rolled better than the player, then they lose. And that's really all there is to this one. So thing is, though, I really liked Ed's implementation of the in-between game. I liked being able to roll three dice and then take the center value and see if that's in between the outside values. So what I did was I created my own power card that follows Ed's game more closely. And so what that's going to look like is right here. We say Nick in between, we wager, and then just like before we see okay we've got our in-between game we've got the rules listed out here we've got our wager and then our outside rolls and then we have logic that tells us whether or not we won or if we lost so if i run this again okay again we see there's a tie here so we get a loser so let's take a look at the code for that and i'll put this down in the description so everybody can grab it but basically it starts out very similar to the other power cards you've seen we go ahead we get power we'll have the selected token try their luck and then the bet logic is the same now here we do our rolls so we've got r1 that's 1d20 r2 is the second d20 and r3 is the third d20 and now we do some math so we're going to see if r1 and r3 match then that's an automatic loss if R1 is greater than R3, then what we have is a big number on one end and a small number on the other end. We're going to skip down to this big small area. And when we go to big small, what we're seeing is if the center value is less than R1 and greater than R3, then we win. Otherwise, we lose. And then if it's the other way around, if R3 is bigger than R1, so the right-hand number is bigger than the left-hand number, then we're going to skip to small big. And then we're going to compare, all right, is R2 greater than R1? And is R2 also less than R3? If so, we win. Otherwise, we lose. Now, this last one I want to show you is only available as a power card in the original post. So it's called Find the Lady. And Find the Lady is kind of like three card Monty. If you're familiar with that game, you have three cards face down. One of those cards is a queen. The dealer slides the cards back and forth super fast, and then you point at which card you think is the queen. The dealer turns the card over, and if you're right, then you win. If you're not, then you lose. So the way this one works is you highlight your token, you click Find the Lady, put in your wager, and then we see here, all right, the dealer's hands flash through a well-practiced routine and the lady eludes you this time. All right, so how does this work? Well, if we look in the code, what we're doing here is we have our selected token. Then we're going to find the lady. Now, the wager works exactly the same. We have our little blurb saying that the dealer's hands move through their well-practiced routine. You point at the card. And then we have our H rolls. And in the H rolls, you can see that we're starting out here, we're rolling a D20, and then we're adding the selected tokens spot modifier. Now, spot is only available if you're using Pathfinder character sheets. I'm using D&D 5e. So what I need to do is change this from selected spot to selected perception bonus. And then we make a second roll called tar which is 1d20 plus a static value of 7, which we're saying is like the dealer's sleight of hand modifier. So you can adjust this up or down if you want to make it harder or easier for your players to be able to spot the lady. And then we do a comparison. If the result roll, that is the roll that the player made, is greater than or equal to the target roll, that is the one that the dealer made, then you win. You find the lady and you win double your money. And if the player didn't make a high enough roll, then you lose and the lady eludes you. So really fun little game. And what I like about this is it's using the character's attributes in order to see if they can win. And that's just really cool because if you've got a, a rogue or someone who has a really high perception bonus, they're going to be able to find cards more easily in a game like this. Now, just so nobody feels left out, I went ahead and recreated the Fine Lady game as a macro that doesn't require power cards too. So just like before, you select your token, you click Find the Lady, what are you betting? And then you get the output that says, okay, we're gambling 10 gold. Here's our player's check. Here's the dealer's check. Our payout would have been 20 gold. And the rules are the player's check must beat or equal the dealer's check. And then you just do the check and figure out whether or not the player gets paid. Code for that looks like this. Again, really simple. Purple template right here. Name, find the lady, gambling. And then 
we're doing our player check, which is just 1d20 plus the selected token's perception bonus. Again, if you're doing Pathfinder, you would change that to be spot. And then our dealer check is the same thing as before. It's a d20 with a static plus 7 modifier. We do in our payout and then the rules that are being displayed over here. So there you have it, a handful of games of chance that you can include the next time your players go into a casino or gambling hall. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.